Hi everyone, it is empties video time. So you know the score by now. I go through my empties and give you a little review on each of them. And I've gone up market. I now hold my empties in this white basket instead of a carrier bag. And I haven't really prepared. So I'm just gonna dive in and see what comes out and give you a little review on each of them. So there's some makeup in here and I'm gonna start with that. And this was the YSL Gloss Velut. Uh, lipstick, it's more of a sort of lip gloss in a lipstick form. Um, you can still see the colour but I have used up as much of it as I can. I've actually had it for a very very long time so it did last me very well. Um, however, would I rebuy this? Probably not. I don't know if they've changed their formula or if this even exists anymore because it was such a long time ago that I first got this. Um, but I love the colour, it's a lovely coral colour. Um, and I love the way it looks on, it does look just like a lip gloss um, but it's much easier to apply because it's in a lipstick form but it doesn't last very well um, so knowing the price of YSL products um, it probably wouldn't be one I would repurchase. Another makeup item and this is a sample, a lot of my makeup items end up being samples for my empties because obviously they're quicker to use up and this is the number 7 Exceptional Definition Mascara, I got this as um, part of a little gift set that you got with a promotion on number seven when you bought sort of two items or something. I love this mascara and I bought it in the full size already. Um, I know there's so many mascaras out there so how do you choose which one to buy and you know if you're already happy with one that you've got why would you go out and buy a new one? But this one was different to any one I've ever tried and as well as the formula being very good the thing for me was the brush um, you'll see in the close-up, hopefully, that it's got three different parts to the brush. It's got um, a side that's got very tiny, fine bristles. It's got a side that's got much sort of thicker and sparse bristles. And then at the top, it's got some bristles sticking out as well. Um, and basically, you can use the fine bristles for your lower lashes. You can use the thicker bristles for your upper lashes. And then the bit on the end you can use to really grab the outside corner lashes and give them more definition um, to make your eyes look much more dramatic. And it works so well and I absolutely loved it. I will say that I haven't opened the full size one yet because I'm, I've got about six or seven other mascaras open. So I'm using those up first before I um, open this one. I didn't want to waste any of them but I can't wait to start using this. And number seven, I always say completely underrated and most of their products that I try I really, really love. So if you're looking for a new mascara, definitely recommend that one. So whilst we're on the subject of number seven, I'll talk about the number seven uh, Protect and Perfect Advanced Serum, or serum, I never know what the right way to say that is. Um, I'll try not to go into a too long story, but I wanted to boycott this, um, and I'll explain why. When they changed their formula, um, so it was a few months ago now, I think, um, number seven revamped all their serums, um, changed the formulas, and did this huge relaunch, um, and the advert on television, expected us to believe that these women all started to use this serum and for six weeks didn't look in the mirror and then they unveiled their faces at the end of the six weeks and they were all so shocked and surprised at how amazing their skin looked. And I, I just found it hard to, to believe that these women had not looked in the mirror for six weeks and as a result I thought I'm not going to buy this but I ran out of the one that I was already using which was the older version of this. As they always do, number seven has an offer on, so I thought, oh, I'll have to try it, and it is really good. It is better than the last one, and I, I enjoyed the last one anyway. I can't explain the texture, but it's so soft to use. It's nothing like any other face cream or serum I've used before. It absorbs really, really well, but doesn't leave any kind of film or um, clogged pore feeling to it. Um, and as soon as I stop using these number seven serums, I always notice the difference. So. Um, I actually finished this one up just this morning, so I did know this was in there, um, and I'm going to go out today and replace it straight away, because I do really, really like this. And you've seen me talk about this before in a favourites video, it's the Stila One Step Colour Corrector Primer. Um, if you'd seen my video, you will know that this had all different colours, three different colours to correct different um, colours on your skin, um, and I found it quite brightening as well. I love this, it's definitely my favourite ever primer that I've tried. I haven't actually bought it because... Again, I've got about five or six other primers that I'm going to use up first rather than waste them, but as soon as I've used all of those up, I will be going out to buy this one. It is a bit more expensive, it's £25, but for me, it's worth it. If you are dry skinned and blotchy, red, red, that kind of thing, but also suffer with a bit of dullness at times, then this is definitely a primer I would recommend. I've got a couple of dry shampoos here, the Dove one and a Batiste one. 
The Batiste ones I've really gone off of. Um, I don't know if they've changed their formula since they first started, or I don't know if it's just because that there's so many other dry shampoos out there now that rival this one. I, I just don't like it anymore. Um, I find it really, really chalky. I find it makes my scalp itchy, um, and I find you have to be really careful about the amount you use. Not enough, and it doesn't work at all. And then there's this little fine line that if you slip over, you look like you've got um, just a load of talcum powder on your hair. So I, I don't like this, this one, it's not for me. The Dove one I did like, um, I bought it, I have talked about this before in a haul I think, I bought it because I thought it was colourless, but it wasn't. However, it's a lot better than the Batiste one. Um, the smell to it is gorgeous, and it is one of those smells that lasts all day, so that I really liked about it. Um, and I would probably buy this again, but I know that the Tresemme one is a lot better. Um, I've used it, if you've never actually bought it myself, but I've used it when I've been around other people's houses, so I'm going to replace these two with a Tresemme one, um, but this one is one I would go back to if I didn't end up liking the Tresemme very much. Sticking with hair, this is the VO5 Give Me Texture Dry Texturising Spray, um, and I bought this because I didn't want to splash out on the Charles Worthington one. I know it's not mega, mega expensive, but it is more expensive than this, but I didn't find this any good at all. Um, I think this was only a few pounds, um, but I found it gave me instant volume, but the volume did not last, so What's the point? I had to use a ton of hairspray on top of this to get any good effect. I have since bought the Charles Worthington one. It is a lot better. It is worth the hype. So I'm just going to stick with that one from now on. And I don't know if I've actually spoken about this before, but I feel like I go on about it all the time because it's probably my favourite beauty product of all time. And it is the Lancome Biofacial Biofacial Eye Makeup Remover. It's one of the biophase ones that has got the oil and the water. You mix it together. It's the only eye makeup remover I will use. Um, again, it's expensive, it's over £20. It probably lasts me about three months if I use it every day. Um, so it is an investment piece, you might say. Um, but I dread running out of this because I know that nothing else rivals it and I know it's expensive to replace. I now have three backups in my cupboard um, to make sure that doesn't happen. I love it just because it's really, really gentle. I don't get any stinging, any tingling. Um, it doesn't dry out my skin, but neither does it leave a really, really oily residue. And it gets everything off, waterproof and mascara the lot. So for, for me, it works really well, and I've never found uh, anything that comes close. So I'm going to stick with this one. A couple of skincare products. This is a simple, kind to skin moisturising face wash. If you saw my um, skincare video, which was one of my first videos, which is a bit cringe to watch, but this was what I was using at the time. Um, and as soon as I ran out of this one, I planned to repurchase it. When I went into Boots, um, they actually had an anti-aging version, so I repurchased that instead, and I love them just as much. I just think they are such good value for money. These are under five pounds. I find they last me a year because you need such a small amount. It lathers up really well. No tightness, no dryness, um, no sensitivity, um, and I just feel like it really cleans my face, which is obviously what it's supposed to do. So I think these are bargain. The anti-aging one's got green tea in it as well, um, and I haven't noticed any um, problems with that in terms of the sensitivity. So um, yeah, I would have bought this again, but I, I felt the anti-aging was more appropriate for my skin type, but love that just as much. Definitely recommend those if you're looking for an inexpensive face wash. Um, and again, you've probably seen this before if you watch my videos. This is the Lush Aroma Toner Water. Um, I got this in a Lush haul when I went in there and found out all the things that were suitable for sensitive skin because I had had problems with Lush products before. Um, and I do really like this. I haven't repurchased it. Um, only because my local Lush is actually shut at the moment for refurbishment. But I, I will go and buy this again because it's got a little spray on. So what I like to do is in the morning, just spray it over my face because it's really, really refreshing. And then, then at night, I spray it onto a cotton pad and use it that way instead. Um, it's, lav it's basically just lavender water and um, rose water. So it's just a nice calming toner um, that, that I really enjoyed using. So yeah, not my all-time favourite. It's still the... Uh, Clarins one, but um, I haven't been afforded to repurchase that lately. So, last up is the Garnier Mineral Invisible um, Deodorant. I featured this in a favourites video as well. Some favourites remain your favourite for a long time and some are fads, um, and this is one that is definitely remaining a favourite. I just find that it works, first of all. Some deodorants don't, and so that's the first plus point. But it's really great for sensitive underarms. Um, the scent is lovely, it doesn't mark, it doesn't stain, it doesn't fade your clothes, basically it does everything it says in the tin and it's really inexpensive. So this is the deodorant I will be using for the foreseeable future, I can tell you that. So that is the end of my 
empties. My empties box is now empty, so I will start to refill that and do another video in a few months' time, probably. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you have, and I will see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Try quite a few out. I thought I'd give you a little review on some of my top and worst picks. Um, so in case you're not familiar with what they are, they are a cleansing solution that you can use to remove makeup and um,